Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time asking that your spirit will calm down afresh on every minister here, every brother, every sister here with new anointing, with new revelation, with new power, with new strength, with new conviction and courage so that, Lord, in the new strength and power of the Holy Ghost, will move out of this place to do exploits for you in Jesus' name. All the grace and all the gift and all the power, all the dominion, all the authority, all the knowledge, all the revelation, all the dynamism, the dynamite of the spirit we need, give to every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that tonight the weak will say, I am strong. The poor will say, I am rich. The sick will say, I am healed. And those who have been defeated in the past, they will say, I am victorious. We pray, Lord, that the victory of the cross and a victory coming from Calvary will be the possession and the experience of everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that you shower your blessing and your gifts upon your people here tonight. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, Tonight, I invite you to turn your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. Proverbs Chapter 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. A man's gift maketh room for him. He might have been at the backside of the desert like Moses. He might have been in the dungeon, unknown, unrecognized, unloved, unsought, like Joseph. But a man's gift maketh room for him. We might not have heard about him, and his people might have cast him away as an illegitimate man or child in the family or in the land, like Jephthah. But a man's gift maketh room for him. They might not have included him when he sent out the sons of Jesse to go with the army of Israel and fight against the Philistines. But he will come from the sheepfold and he will be known because a man's gift maketh room for him. He might be referred to as one of the children of captivity. And when the king is looking for interpretation of his dream, they might not have thought about him first. They might call all the wise men of Babylon. But when they all fail, Daniel will show up because a man's gift maketh room for him. And as you go through the watch of God, you'll find a time comes that the man that has the appropriate grace and the appropriate gift will come forward to the point or to the time or to the place where he is needed and his gift will bring him before the men of authority in the land, bringeth him before great men. As you look at the word of God, you will find that grace and gifts are necessary for a fruitful ministry. That's why we're looking at this message tonight, ministerial gifts for a fruitful ministry. Ministerial gifts for a fruitful ministry. What's a fruitful ministry? A fruitful ministry is a ministry that is producing fruit. A minister that is fruitful in his service in the kingdom of God, 
you are going to find some things in his life. Number one, there will be abundant fruit of genuine converts. That's a fruitful minister. Number two, there will be abiding fruit of true followers of Christ. Number three, there will be visible numerical growth of members. Members in his church that are bringing forth the fruit of repentance and the fruit of righteousness. Number four, there will be multiplied impact of his ministry through members functioning as salt and light in the community. When you are thinking of a fruitful minister, number five, you'll find increased visible fruit of the Spirit in the church, the local church that God has granted him privilege, opportunity to lead. Number six, there will be increased production or reproduction of God-pleasing, fruit-bearing Christians, soul winners, and ministers through that church. And yet, for all that to take place, and for the fruits to show up, and to reveal themselves in your ministry, you must have the appropriate gift and the appropriate grace of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, whereof I was made a minister. I was made a minister. The power of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the molding, mentoring ability of the Lord was effective in my life. I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. You'll find here that as the apostle speaks about gift, he speaks about grace. He had been made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto him by the effectual working of his power. There's a mouthful in that verse alone. It talks about his power. And it talks about the working of that power in him, for him, and through him. And it was effectual and effective in his life. In the circle of friends, ministerial friends and companions around him. And on the field where the Lord had sent him to, the power of the Lord walking in him, walking for him, walking through him, worked effect effectively and effectually. And he said, you can see, efficient believers, an efficient church, you can see that the Lord has made me a minister. And it is according to the gift of the grace of God. But he wants to assure you that it wasn't for him alone. It's for everyone called of God, saint of God, commissioned of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7, And unto every one of us, Timothy, did you hear that? Don't be timid. Every one of us has something. Miriam, Mary, Josephine, did you hear that? Everyone, and unto every one of us, Philip, go to Samaria and do the work of an evangelist because unto every one of us. And then James, stand up to it and do what the Lord has called you to do because unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 
it tells us the grace is there on the one hand and the gift is there on the other hand what will you do with grace without gift how will you perform with gift without grace what will you achieve by the gifts of the spirit without the fruit of the spirit and how important you could be in ministry with the fruit of the spirit without the gift of the spirit the grace and the gift the gift and the grace but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ then he tells us in verse 10 he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting for the equipping for the completing for the edification of the saints and for the preparation of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come and not a single minister is left behind impotent weak powerless not able to function until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man a developed man a fully formed man a well equipped man until we all come in the unity of the faith of the knowledge and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ there's a lot the Lord has for you and you will get them you will not leave this congress the way you came if you had gifts before you didn't know you will discover them if you have gifts that have not been activated in your life they will become activated in jesus name you see the gifts can be classified into various categories number one there are support gifts very important very important gifts support gifts number two there are service gifts the gifts that will make you to serve the gift that will make you to support number three there are sign gifts sign the gifts that are for signs and wonders and depending on the ministry the lord has given you god gives appropriate gifts to make us fulfill our calling in his kingdom work I divide this message to three parts number one special gifts for a fruitful ministry special gifts for a fruitful ministry number two spiritual gifts in faithful fruitful ministers spiritual gifts in faithful fruitful ministers number three supernatural gifts for a fruitful ministry number one special gifts for a fruitful ministry when we talk about the gifts in the new testament you need to understand that the gifts are so many many people only know they they have a limited understanding of the gifts of the spirit in the new testament but there are some special special gifts and they are all for a fruitful ministry look at romans chapter 12 reading from verse 6 have been then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us i want you to always notice gift grace grace gift gift given to us differing gifts but according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy that's one gift let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith 
or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. That's another gift. Or he that teaches on teaching. That's another gift. Or he that exhorts on exhortation. Another gift again. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, a gift of giving. He that rules leadership, another gift, let him do it with diligence. He that shows mercy, you see that mercy, compassion, care, kindness, practical love, like that of Dockers, another gift. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. You understand then, all these various gifts, there are special gifts of ministry. And you have seen here, a gift for service, a gift of teaching, a gift of exhortation, a gift of giving, a gift of leading, a gift of administration. Uh, have you wondered why, as you look at various leaders in the church, you might be a good, effective teaching leader, but on administration, you're poor. But there's nothing to worry about in that, because in that church, as God has given us a person with a ministry and the gift of exhortation, and we allow him to operate and function in that gift, there is another person in that church with the gift of teaching. And when he comes out and he teaches, we know that that's his gift. Another person is having the gift of service and is serving, he loves to serve. She loves to serve. And she's serving the people of God and people are the happier for it because of his service or her service. Another one is just compassionate. Another one is so caring. Another one is so loving. Whatever the need is, eh, there's somebody that is sick there. There's somebody that is having a problem there. And it's always been attracted to those places of need. And is serving them with mercy and compassion and care and kindness and love. Another person has the ministry of helping. He just helps and helps and helps. And newcomers come to the church, is helping them. The people he never knew is helping them. And there's a gift of administration. We're having a retreat, we're having a conference, and you put a particular brother there, and uh, the brother, he happens to have the gift of administration. Everything just falls in place. And he, he, he knows how to identify the people that will be in this section and this section. He knows how to delegate, and he knows how to supervise, and he knows how to motivate the people. It's like, you know, it's just a gift to a team. And if you put a teacher there and you say, now, you teacher at this time, you will make sure that everything is put in place. Although it's a good teacher, it might even come and come and quote a lot of Bible references. This retreat we're going to have and this program we're going to have, it must succeed. One reason, two, second reason, third reason, fifth reason. For these seven reasons, it must succeed. How is he going to succeed? By the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of Jesus Christ, the power of faith, and the power of this and the power of that. And he teaches everybody. And that he finishes teaching, and we go through that the retreat, and the retreat is all a mess. He's a good teacher, but he's not an administrator. Pastors and leaders, will you discover in the church the one that is having this gift, and this gift, and this gift, and don't knock their heads together. Love them. Unite them. Make them a formidable, wonderful team because they are all the gifts that the Lord has given to the church and we need all of them. Another one is uh, just uh, giving to another gift that is just bearing fruit. It's just bearing fruit. It's life and it's ministry. It's a fruit-bearing life and a fruit-bearing ministry. Let's look at another thing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Uh, you, you find that uh, the gifts that we have read about, the teaching and the ministry and the exhortation and the help, and the helping and the administration, everything. Let me show you some examples. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 18, and I'm reading to you from verse 24. It says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. 
this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the spirit. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Look up here, my brothers and sisters. And the Lord is teaching us something here. There are some gifts they work mightily, powerfully, effectively in the private. Some other gifts, they work mightily, powerfully in the public. Public, private. Look at Aquila and Priscilla. They had gifts. But their own gift was a quiet gift of encouraging, of motivating, of helping, of lifting up, of putting some dynamite in the gift that Apollos already had. Why is it Aquila and Priscilla themselves? Why didn't they come to the public and then do it by themselves? My dear brother, my dear sister, there are some gifts that are just private. And then there are other people that have their gifts public. Apollos had his own gift public. And when Aquila, they were sitting in the congregation and they were listening to this fiery preacher, and he knew only the things concerning John the Baptist. He was limited. But Aquila and Priscilla, with their private gift, they knew more. And they called him in the private. No jealousy. No carnal comparison. If we teach him what we have, he'll be more effective. His gift will come out more. And we are just sitting down there in the congregation. Yes, that's your place. And you're going to have your reward. That's the kind of gift the Lord has given you. And this man, Apollos, as the Lord has given him the public ministry, call him. And thank God, Apollos was not proud. Apollos did not say, I'm a man of the pulpit. I'm a man exposed to the public. I've never heard you in the public. You just sit down there in the congregation and you have this private gift. If you knew that, how I could do better, why didn't you come to the platform and the pulpit and do it yourself? Apollos understood that there are different kinds of gifts. And the gift there sitting on the pew may be greater than the gift here standing at the pulpit. And the gift there sitting at the pew in your church might be able to help, might be able to uplift, might be able to improve, might be able to increase the power, the knowledge, the revelation of God for this man that is standing at the pulpit. Don't despise any of the gifts we have in your local church. Don't despise any of the gifts we have in the church in the whole state, in the church in the whole nation. And sometimes we leaders, we must understand, we do not have all the gifts. I have some, he has some, you have some, she has some. And if the work of the Lord is going to prosper in our hands, we're going to get all the gifted people together. The Lord has given them gifts. And he wanted the gifts to be used and useful. That's the reason why he gave them all the gifts he has given. And we're told here in verse 27, after that expanded the way of the Lord unto Apollos more perfectly. Then we are told, and when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, he helped them much, which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Well, it's very clear to you and to me, brothers and sisters, that the gifts are there in the men and the women, in the brothers and the sisters that are working in the church. And there are even some people that are not in the working team yet. All they need, they need some little encouragement. 
and they need some a little they, they need some a little motivation that brother you can do something sister you can do something and there are some people that they they want to do another thing they, they have looked that they are pastor on the pulpit and they have looked at that coordinator or that uh, pastor that is uh, teaching some description and they have looked at those people and they have said in their hearts, I want to be like that. That's a good desire. But my brother, we're missing you. We're missing your gift. We're missing your ability. We're missing the thing that the Lord has given to you while you're sitting down there. And you're folding your hand as if you cannot do anything. And then you are wanting and you're desiring to be like brother so-and-so. And be like sister so-and-so. Drop that. You are good the way you are. And the gift of God in you is capable of helping in the work of the Lord, in the work of the kingdom. Rise up and use the gift you have got. When you use yours, I use mine, he uses his, and she uses hers. Then the body of Christ will be built up. We're told in Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. What if uh, Timothy just went from his house to the pulpit, from his pulpit to the counseling room, from the counseling room back home, and then he did that the following week, and the following week, and the following month, and the following year. And he never has any interaction with people. And he never knows the people there that are sitting in the pew, loaded with gifts, loaded with the power of God. And if they had been chosen, and if they had been delegated to do something, the work of God will move on. Not only that the work of God will move on, the next generation will be able to continue to carry the baton, and they will be able to run with it. But what if Timothy just, you know, kept to himself? I am reading. I'm meditating. I am praying. I'm preparing myself. I'm developing my gift. I want to be my best for the church. And I don't want any interaction with anybody. Human relations, that's not my area. And touching the lives of other people, that's not my area. Equipping other people, that's not my area. And telling everybody, you rise up and make use of your gift, that's not my area. My area is, I know my gift. And I'm going to use my gift, my brother. Your ministry will be limited if you are like that. But you will mix with the people of God. You will encourage the people of God. You will mobilize and motivate the people of God. You will stir up the people of God. Timothy, you see what Paul did to you? Timothy, you see the encouragement that Paul has given to you, stirring you up, encouraging you, motivating you, telling you, you have it already. Stir up the gift of God in you. You remember, Timothy, how Paul the apostle stirred you up and made you to rise up and to be somebody. What Paul has done to you, do it to other children of God and to other members of the church, and you will commit this work into the hands of faithful men. Brothers and sisters, look up here. Faithful men, that does not mean men that never make any mistake. No. Faithful men, the people that are faithful to God, they might make mistakes. Who never made mistakes before? I've made my mistakes before, and I still make mistakes. And we're not talking about committing sin. You know, sometimes you listen to a preacher and he's talking about uh, Noah's ark. And he said, you know, when the Lord called uh, this uh, Noah to build the ark and he said the, the flood was coming and uh, we don't have time to read it now, then he will say, but when you get back home, you can turn to Genesis chapter 11 and then you will see Noah there and Noah's ark and how the flood came. And by Genesis chapter 12, you know, the flood took everybody away. That man of God, uh, Noah, was a righteous man. You get back home and read it, Genesis 11 and 12. Now, uh, the man is saved and the man is sanctified and is a good preacher, only that he made a mistake at that time, but unfortunately for him, they recorded it in cassette, and you have taken it to your stage, then he realized, say, oh, what am I going to do? We cannot get the cassette back from the people, 
And everybody, every time they see him, they say, that's the preacher with Genesis chapter 11. But because he has made a mistake like that, does not mean he's not a faithful man. He's a good man. And he has the gift of God in him. Do not despise a man. Do not reject a man. Men in your church, women in your church, the people in your church, because of a little mistake here, is not intentional. It's not mischievous. They're not trying to destroy the work of God. If you are concerned about the mistake, call them. My brother, there was a mistake here. I know it's not intentional. Let's forget it. I'm just telling you so that it doesn't happen the next time. And let the gift of God in them be useful. And everybody will be useful. And the church that God has made you a leader of will progress and will move forward and will prosper in Jesus' name. Now, to fulfill God's purpose in giving the gifts to each of us, we must demonstrate, number one, conviction. Number two, concentration. Number three, compassion. Number four, consecration. Number five, courage. Number six, cooperation. And then number seven, you avoid pride and sin. Number one, conviction. The Lord has given you gift, and you must have the conviction. Don't run down yourself. Don't pull down yourself. I'm a nobody. I know nothing. I have nothing. I'm a backbench man. I'm a backbench sister. I can never do anything. I cannot do it like they're doing it. My brother, don't run down yourself. That's not humility. That's false. Have the conviction that when God called you, he had a purpose in mind, and he called you for a good reason, for a good purpose, and you will achieve something in Jesus' name. Moses said, I am his Tamara. And God said, don't give me that information. I made your mouth, I understand, but I'm sending you anyhow. And Jeremiah said, I am a child. And God said, don't say that again. I know all that information, but you are still my instrument. And you are still my servant. You are the one I am sending forth. Let this conviction be in you that the Lord has chosen you and the Lord has put you in place and the work of God will prosper in your hand and the church of the Lord will grow through your ministry in Jesus' name. Number two, concentrate. Concentrate. Don't run here and there. Don't scatter your seed on every mountain, on every valley, on every field. Concentrate. Concentrate. In this place where the Lord has placed you, do the work there and make a mark so that we will know and posterity will know and your children will know. I mean your children in the Lord. They will know that our pastor, our leader, concentrated this one thing I do concentrate, have a focus, and know that the Lord has called you for something and do that thing effectively. If there is little time extra that you can take out and do this and do this and do the other thing, fine. But let the maximum part, the major part of your time, be used and spent on the thing the Lord has called you to. Number three, compassion. You know, people say, I don't care what you know until I know how you care. I don't care what you know until I know how you care. Compassion, my brothers and sisters, whatever gift we have, whatever ability we have, without love, without mercy, without compassion, without kindness, we cannot go far. We cannot go far. But with all the gifts the Lord has given us, we also have compassion with it. And we're not judgmental. We're not proud. We're not trampling down other people. And we're not denying other people the privilege of using their gifts while we're using our own gifts. We're compassionate. Somebody has done something. I want to go back to that again. It's made a mistake. But before you pounce on him and before you hinder him from continuing to use his gift in the church, remember too, some years ago, you made a mistake worse than that. Once again, I'm not talking about committing sin. I'm not talking about doing evil. 
And I'm not talking about deliberately just wanting to scatter the church of God. You made greater mistakes than that. And the Lord just called you. You know how you felt? My son, my child, how could you do that? Oh, Lord, I am sorry. And he even wept beyond, uh, you know, the point that the Lord was making. And the Lord said, that's all right, that's enough, that's enough. Get up and go and preach and go and do your work. If the Lord was merciful to you, there are other people in the church that have gifts in the Lord. Let them also use their gifts. A mistake has happened. Uh, something should not have taken place that my brother come. That should not have happened. But I just told you, let's forget about it. Go back to your work. Let's understand that compassion is very important. Then consecration. That you, you lay yourself on the altar. And you lay that gift on the altar. And you say, Lord, this gift you have given unto me, I will use it for the glory of your name. Then there is courage. Because, you know, if you don't have courage, you will have it. But even the people that don't have enough gifts, as much gifts as you have, if they have greater courage, when they come out and they make use of their gift, they will look more effective than you are. You have sometimes seen that, uh, you know, in the academic world, there's somebody that is a first-class brain. And, uh, you know, he, when it comes to knowledge and facts, when he's by himself to just put all the, all the facts and data down on paper, this man is terrific. He has a lot of information. He's a bank data himself or a data bank himself. But when he comes to the public and is to speak to just a few people, is at a loss. He doesn't know what to say. And it will be as if he doesn't know anything. Well, because of the lack of courage, the people will not know how much he has, how much he knows. The other fellow that comes, and this other fellow does not know half as much as the first brother, the first person knows. And he comes, but is bold and courageous. And then he stands. And even when he makes a grammatical mistake, he makes the grammatical mistake, he makes it smiling. And he makes it to look at his face and he's saying, I'm right. Am I not right? Listen to me. I have a lot more to tell you. You're even enjoying his grammatical mistake because of his courage, because of his boldness, which you give. If you're going to make use of your gift appropriately, there must be conviction and concentration and compassion and consecration and courage and then cooperation. Cooperation. You'll cooperate with the other brethren. The other people the Lord has established in the church that you and them, they and you will join hands together and cooperate. Two are better than one. And in that cooperation, you'll be able to do all that the Lord wants you to do and to accomplish, it will be done in Jesus' name. And then you avoid pride, you avoid sin. Because pride can bring us down. And the way to avoid pride is always to remember, what have you got that has not been given to you? And if it has, it has been given to you, what will make you to be proud? I come to point number two. Spiritual gifts in faithful, fruitful ministers. Spiritual gifts in faithful, fruitful ministers. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading verses 1 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And then he tells us in verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man for a purpose, to profit with her. That is, to profit. It's kingdom profit. It's not a personal profit. It is the profit that is known, recognized by other people. I thank God for that brother. That's the prophet. I praise God for that sister. That's the prophet. You know, it, it blessed me as I came to the Congress. You will not understand. I enjoyed all the preachers. I enjoyed the singers. But I'm telling you, somebody that made an impact in my life. She wasn't on the pulpit. She wasn't in the choir. Just saw me in there. And I'm telling you, 
those encouraging words she gave me lifted me up and it really ministered to my life more than i enjoyed all the other things i had i even took notes i didn't take notes when she was talking to me the thing just talk in my heart and the thing she said just encouraged me and when i've forgotten every other thing i remember that thing that she said what an upliftment it was to me that's profit in ministry when other people are saying brother you help me sister you really help me you did something for me and you made that congress a period of real revitalization renewal refreshing unto me there is profit in ministry as you look at this for example in first timothy chapter first timothy chapter four First Timothy chapter 4, it says in verse 15, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. That thy profiting may appear to all. When that brother is testifying, he helped me. The other sister is saying, ah, did you say that? Really, I'm telling you, every time I go to church, every time I listen to Timothy, it's really solving a problem in my life. And it's doing something in my family. And, you know, I like to listen to Timothy because he really profits my life and he really moves me forward in the things of the Lord. The reason we're given the gifts for ministry is so that we can profit with that, with that ministry or with that gift in the ministry of the word of God. Then we're told in Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, reading verses 3 and 4, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which had the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also, bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will, gifts of the Holy Ghost. Now as you look at individuals one by one, and then you see how spiritual gifts operated in their ministry. Then you understand whatever ministry the Lord has placed you on, you need the appropriate spiritual gift that will help, that will lift up, that will build up, that will edify, and that will mold people's lives, that will shake everything shakeable in that community so that you'll have a definite impact upon the people that you are ministering to. Let me show you a few examples. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, let's look at the example of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34, I'm reading to you from verse 10. Spiritual gifts in faithful, fruitful ministry. In uh, chapter 34, verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, his fellowship with the Lord, and the impartation of the Lord unto his life, and everything the gifts that, they got, that God gave him. Even the people testified, there's not been a man in Israel since uh, Moses died, exactly like Moses. You can't find a duplicate. In all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. And so you find he, he had gifts, and those gifts actually did something for him in the ministry. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 7, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day, Will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Can you see here, a God was even so generous with his gifts that he said, Joshua, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to magnify you in the sight of the people of all Israel. I want them to know, I want them to know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Can I tell you something here? Please pay attention. Region overseers and state overseers and national overseers. 
uh, there is something you can do for the workers in your state in your region in your nation as they are coming up as they are coming up you give them public recognition you give them public appreciation here almighty god said joshua you're a new leader and the people are still remembering moses and they're still remembering here is what moses did here is what moses did you know what i'm going to do for you i am going to magnify you i'm going to make the people to appreciate you i'm going to make the people to recognize that as i was with moses so will i be with thee if almighty god can give that kind of public approval by power signs and wonders that joshua will be acceptable to the people because after all moses is not here now and joshua needs to get the work done and god is saying i'm not going to be stingy with my approval with my appreciation with my public recognition i am going to magnify you in the sight of all israel do you ever give public appreciation to the upcoming leaders you know somebody has uh, just uh, preached and maybe that's his first time and the people don't know him too much yet and he's, he's made some real points and instead of inside in your heart thinking huh if this uh, fellow continues to preach like this and i continue to give him opportunity he might outshine me outrun me uh, see how the people prayed after that man uh, spoke and i this is my first time of giving him a message i didn't know he could do like that if i continue to give him like that and they begin to know him what am i going to do what are you going to do that's to your credit because now you have raised up a son you have raised up a daughter and they see that your son is doing well and your daughter is doing well that's to your credit raise them up lift them up equip them develop them encourage them and when they need public appreciation give it to them so that the people will know it's not only you that thank god this other pastor is coming up this other overseer is coming up and that other person to god is using him that's how we can encourage the upcoming brothers and the upcoming sisters how they can minister effectively in the house of the lord how did the lord do what he said he will do to joshua in joshua chapter 4 verse 14 joshua chapter 4 verse 14 on that day the lord magnified joshua in the sight of all israel and they feared him as they feared moses it's not the slavish fear there's no slavish fear here it's respect and honor they knew that the power of the lord and the presence of the lord had come upon joshua all the days of his life and then you, he tells us this man was a faithful man in joshua chapter 11 verse 15 joshua chapter 11 verse 15 here we are told that as the lord commanded moses his servant so did moses command joshua and so did joshua he left nothing undone of all that the lord commanded moses no wonder the lord himself said i'm going to magnify this young man i'm going to present him before the people i am going to give him all the support he needs so that he'll be effective in ministry look at the final comment on the ministry of joshua in joshua chapter 24 verse 31 and Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua. You know what Joshua did? Joshua surrounded himself with capable, gifted people. And then even after Joshua had died, the children of Israel, they served the Lord in the days of the elders that outlived Joshua my brothers and sisters look up here now while Joshua was still alive and the Lord was magnifying him and the Lord was giving him public recognition and public approval he also what the Lord did for him he did for the elders around him what if uh, Joshua did not give any chance to any of the leaders any of the elders around him to do anything and he says no I don't want them to be known I'm the man on the stage at this moment. I'm the only one that should be known. After he had died, the people will not be familiar with any of these other leaders, any of these other elders. 
but our familiar with them. They knew them. Uh, that's, uh, even without uh, you seeing their faces, when you hear the voice from afar, that's Brazil and so preaching. And when you hear that, you know, hey, there's somebody singing solo, say, hey, that must be sister so-and-so. That's her voice. You recognize them because they're given chance and they're given opportunity. What I am saying is we as leaders, as the Lord is blessing us, let's let the blessing flow. What the Lord is doing for you, do it for the elders and the leaders and the teachers and the workers around you. So that if you go off the stage, the congregation will be already familiar with these other leaders and elders. And they have served the Lord in your days. They will be able to serve the Lord in the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. I pray the Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. Now, God gives us all the spiritual gifts we need. What are they? Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. And for to one is given the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. You, you know all this already. This just to remind you. It's a supernatural gift. That uh, there is a problem we are trying to solve. Uh, there is something that has come up. And all of a sudden, a fragment of the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord. As to direct you know, what to do. How to approach it. The brother will just say, well, why don't we do it this way? And everybody will know. There will be the register in your heart. That's a word of wisdom. And then it says to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. And to another, the working of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, discerning of spirits. And to another, diverse kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. In verse 11 now. But all these walketh that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will let me just remind you i said it before but before i go on from this a second point that the gifts of the spirit work best with the fruit of the spirit the gifts of the spirit work best with the fruit of the spirit as well the gifts of the spirit in your life and then you also have the fruit of the spirit. There is love. Nobody wants to come near any man. He might have power, might have whatever he has. If there's no love, there's no joy. It's a kill joy. And anytime you come near him, he'll discourage you. He'll put you down. Whatever gift he has, who cares? Who wants to know? We don't want to know about that. But you see, the person that is attracting people, and the person that is helping people, and the person that his life and his ministry is impacting other people, he has the gifts of the Spirit, and he has the fruit of the Spirit, and everything working together. Let's come to point number three. In point number three, supernatural gifts for a fruitful ministry. Supernatural gifts for a fruitful ministry. Already you see the gifts there. And this is for a fruitful ministry. In Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Are the believers here tonight? These signs shall follow you. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Nobody will kill you with poison. I said, nobody will kill you with poison. And they shall, it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, we're going to go forth. I said, we're going to go forth. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. The Lord doing what? Walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. 
confirming the word with signs following god will do it for you that as you go out and you minister with the supernatural spiritual gifts that the lord will put in your life and in your ministry and as you go out and you minister the lord will not leave you alone and you will not be doing it in isolation separate separated from the lord you'll be doing it in partnership in cooperation with the holy ghost himself and the lord will be confirming your word with signs following in jesus name i just show you one man in the bible old testament again that this man the lord gave him the gifts supernatural gifts supernatural power and then as he walked the lord was walking with him and the ministry prospered in his hand now you have heard i read to you the word of wisdom the word of knowledge the discerning of spirit the gift of faith the gift of the working of miracles and the gift of healing and also the prophecy and the speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues i want you to see what this one single man and see the gift of God in his life. And you can begin to say, oh, that is that gift there, that is that gift there, that is that gift there, upon this single man. And if God can do this for this single man, in the Old Testament, begin to think about it. God is not a partial God. All the gifts you need to succeed in the ministry, the Lord will give unto you. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What? shall i do for thee that means he didn't know what he will do what shall i do for thee? now tell me it just came all of a sudden upon him this is the gift of the spirit in his life what hast thou in the house and uh, she said thy handmaid has not anything in the house save except a pot of oil then he said go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels borrow not a few and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and they all stayed and she told she came and told the man of god and he, he said go sell the oil pay thy debt and leave thou and thy children of the rest there was a problem and then the problem needed a solution how are we going to find solution the word of wisdom one of the gifts of the spirit came and the problem was solved verse 15 and he called her and when he had called her she stood in the door and he said about this season according to the time of life thou shalt embrace a son and she said nay my lord thou man of god do not lie unto thy handmaid and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. That's the gift of the working of miracles right there. This single man. And then you come to verse 32. In verse 32, we're told, and when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. And he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child was warm and then he returned and walked in the house to and fro. And he went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. And so he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. 
that's another gift of the working of miracles because it just happened right there verse 38 and it came to pass again uh, it came to Gilgal and there was a deer, a famine in the land a drought in the land and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot and seat pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gods its last full and came and shred them into the pot of pottage. So, they, for they knew them not. So, they poured out the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot. It was uh, disturbing their stomach immediately. It was like it was a poisonous, a wild thing that they cooked for them unknowingly and they could not eat thereof. And he said, bring me meal. And he, and he cast and he cast into each, he each into the pot. And he said, pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no more harm in the pot. I'm telling you, a man like this will prosper in the ministry. Whatever problem came up, a woman came not having anything, totally poor. And the creditors came wanting to take the two children. A miracle came. And the sons of the prophets came, and the prophets came, and they needed to be fed. But the food was uh, poisonous, dangerous, and was almost killing them. And a miracle took place. Again, you will see that a person like this, the ministry will prosper in his hand. That's the prayer I'm praying for you. All the gifts you need, all the power you need, the Lord will bring everything upon you so that the ministry will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. Verse 42, and there came a man from Beershalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruit, 20 loaves of barley and full ears of corn in the host thereof. And he said, give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, what should I say this before an hundred men? And he said again, give the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and they shall live thereof. So he set it before them and they did eat and led thereof according to the word of the Lord. The Lord multiplied the food here just like at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. A man that has solution for every problem and there is a good idea, a spirit given idea for anything that came up in his ministry and he was always solving problems by the gifts of the spirit, always meeting needs by the gifts of the spirit of course the ministry will prosper in the hand of such a man in chapter 5 reading from verse 9 so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha and Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean but Naaman was wroth and went away and said behold I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord is God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper and not have banner and far apart the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel may I not wash in them and be clean so he turned and went away in a rage and his servants came near and spake unto him and said my father if the prophet had bid thee do some great sin wouldest thou not have done it how much rather then when he says unto thee wash and be clean then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean this one came from a foreign land this one came from an enemy land and the miracle power of the Lord still worked in his life in the ministry of Elisha you tell me the people at home it's working and the people on the foreign field it's working the people that are familiar the miracle power is working and the people that are not familiar the miracle power is working don't you know the ministry will prosper in the hand of such an individual and in chapter 6 I'm reading to you from verse 1 we're seeing the gift of God and the power of God in the life of this single individual and the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight and too narrow and too small for us let us go 
we pray thee unto Jordan and take this every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may dwell and he answered go ye and one said be content I pray they be satisfied be pleased I pray you I beseech you I'm pleading with you and go with thy servants and he answered I will go with all his gifts you have humility he still had humility I'll go with you and then we're told so he went with them and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing, was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? I'm telling you that this man was the gift of God in his life. No problem ever perplexed him. No problem ever confused him. No problem ever surprised him. And he never threw his hands helplessly into the air. What are we going to do? I've never seen a problem like this before. When the gift of God is in your life. When the gift of the Spirit is in your life. And that gift of the Spirit is providing solution to every need and every problem in the church, in the field, and in the missionary work that you are doing. The work will grow. When there is nothing that confuses you, you, you never say, we cannot do this because there's no money. We cannot do this because the axe head is falling into the sea. We cannot do this because of the drought. We cannot do this because of the famine. We cannot do this because, you know, it's, it's just impossible. And nobody can succeed in a place like this. When the gift of the Spirit is in your life, you will succeed. And I pray you will succeed. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down, he cut down his stick, and he cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said, said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Uh, do you understand here? If you look at this miracle ministry of Elisha, you will see that when he's among the workers, the sons of the prophets, miracles are taking place. He's in the nation, and it's for the women ministry. And the women, you know, they say, this is the need, a miracle is taking place. And the barren women there, the Shunammite, a miracle is also taking place. And with the children ministry, there is sickness, there's even death. And again, there is a miracle that is taking place. And when it comes to the food area, a miracle is taking place. You tell me, a man that is chosen of God, a man that is appointed of God, and in every area of ministry, whether with women, or with children, or with men, or with the sons of the prophets, or with the workers, or with the elders, a miracle is always taking place, and it's always having solution to all the problems of every section in the ministry. Of course, the work will prosper, and you will see the proof that this man has been called of God, has been anointed of God. This is the anointing I'm desiring for you. And it will come upon you. And you will have it in Jesus' name. Now we've been talking about his helping with the gift of the Spirit in his life, helping the various areas and sections of the work. He now comes to help even the, even the king himself. I'm reading from verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. And took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my calm. And a man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. We're talking about now his ministry extending to the king of the land, to the king of the nation to the political rulers, to the highly placed people. A man like this, that his ministry is touching the illiterates and is touching the highly placed, is touching the subjects and the citizens in the land, and his ministry is touching the king and the rulers and the political authoritative decision makers in the land. Tell me, a man like that, that has a gift, that cuts across the whole nation. The work of God will prosper in his hand. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying in verse 9, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, uh, uh, told him of, and warned him of, and saved himself there not once and not thrice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this sin. And he called the servants and said unto them, 
will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, Not my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go, spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it came to pass, and, uh, and, it, and it was told him that, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and compassed the city and then the servant of the man of God was risen early in the morning and gone forth behold an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and the, and a servant said unto him at last my master how shall we do and he answered fear not with all your gift you must have courage if you don't have courage, you won't be able to do anything. The gift might be there. In fact, the fear will paralyze you. The fear will shut up your mouth. The fear will make your brain blank. You will not know what to do. With the gifts of the spirit you have, supernatural gifts, natural gifts, whatever gifts they are, you must have boldness, fearlessness, and courage and conviction with all those gifts. Then you'll be able to do what the Lord has appointed you to do. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You must have the ability of seeing into the invisible. And you will walk with God as him that sees the invisible. Why we look not at things which are seen? Because the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And then he says, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, you will see. I said, you will see. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and, and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to Elisha, Elisha prayed and said, Elisha prayed unto them and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to, according to, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way. I'm not really the one you are looking for, am I? Are you not looking for re really the person you are looking for? The reason you want to get at me is because you really want to get the king of Syria. And I have been standing between you and the king of Syria. I'm not the one you are looking for. Am I your enemy? I'm the prophet of God. I'm the one directing the people of God and showing them the way, the way of the Lord. I'm not the one you are looking for. This is not the way. Neither is this a city that you really want to come. Follow me. I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. How is it that these people just followed him? They were looking for Elisha. And this man just these people they just all their chariots and he said, Can I can I sit in a good comfortable place there? And he even gave me lift and then he took them to the king of Samaria. I'm telling you, when you have the gift of God in your life, ministry will become fun. Ministry will just become something you, you just have a ride, a good time in your life, and all this burden and all this tiredness, and how can I do this? How can I do this? Everything will vanish away, and every day your strength will be renewed more and more in Jesus' name. And then we are told in verse 20, and it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, When he saw them, my father referring to the man of God, Shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. What of wisdom? Wisdom. Don't kill them. They are your enemies. Feed them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword or, and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and, go, and they will go back to their master. So he prepared great provision for them. And they, when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. Elisha said, go back to your master. Tell him what other miracle you have seen again. And they went back. And they told the king, they said, you cannot catch that man. 
nobody will catch you. I said they will not catch you. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. I've shown you that just one man, just one man can minister to all these various sections of the nation. All these various sections of the society with the power, the anointing, the gift of God in his life. And what God has done for other people, he will do for you. The Lord will give you all the gifts you need. All the power you need. And you will minister in the strength of the Lord with supernatural gifts in Jesus' name. I've said it before. I'm saying it with conviction. I'll say it again. We will hear good stories about you. We will we'll hear testimonies of how you are profiting in the ministry in Jesus' name. You will stand up now. You will tell the Lord you have come for your own portion of spiritual gifts. You need gift. You need grace. All that the Lord will do for you. All that the Lord will do in you. So that you will succeed in the ministry. And you will profit in the ministry. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Talk to the Lord in prayer. You will profit in the ministry. You will prosper in the ministry. This is your chance. To ask the Lord. To demand from the Lord. To say Lord you have called me. You have commissioned me. You have put me in place. But I need all the gifts that are appropriate for the calling and for the ministry where you have put me. So that I also will be able to do the work effectively. Or the power of the Lord. Or the anointing of the Lord. Or the unction of the Spirit of God in my life. So that Lord, according to the prophetic word that has come to me and upon me, your work will prosper in my hand. Talk to the Lord and be desirous that whether it's children ministry or women ministry or youth ministry or campus ministry or it's a pastoral ministry or it's a supportive ministry, whatever it is and whatever it is that the Lord has called you to do in the vineyard of the Lord, that you, you, you will do it effectively in the strength, in the power of the Lord. If the Lord can so equip a single man like Elisha like this, because he desired it. He desired the power of God and the spirit of God and the anointing of God. If the Lord can use a single man like this, this is your chance and this is your turn. The Lord wants to use you. He wants to use you, but you need his gift in your life. Ministerial gifts that will make you a success in ministry. He'll give you the appropriate wisdom, the appropriate knowledge, the appropriate revelation, the appropriate faith. The appropriate gifts so that you will be what you ought to be and do what you ought to do to the glory of God for the expansion of the work of the Lord and for effectiveness in the ministry the Lord has called you to talk to the Lord he called you and he will equip you will anoint you for the service and the ministry has called you to in Jesus name we pray in Jesus' name we pray. Are you sleeping? Are you ready? The Lord will anoint you. The gifts of the Spirit will be in your life. And it is by faith. As I pray, you believe the declaration of the word of the Lord. And it's going to be unto you according to the proclamation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have shown us all the various gifts that operate and function in the ministry, in the ministry of the people you have called. Lord, you have called us to various kinds of ministries, and we know wherever we are, whatever we are supposed to do, if we do it faithfully in your power, in your strength, with your anointing, with the gift that you bring upon our lives, our reward will not be less than the reward of other people in other areas of ministry. Therefore, Lord, today we come to you and we pray, O oh Lord, that you will help us to remain and concentrate and focus on the ministry you have given us in Jesus name help us Lord to move out with conviction and consecration and concentration 
and courage so that lord we will not be here and there try to envy that and try to grab that and try to desire another thing but the ministry where you have put us we will do good in that ministry in jesus name Amen. we pray lord that your power will be upon everyone here your anointing will come upon everyone here and all the faith we need, all the gifts we need, and all the knowledge we need, all the wisdom we need, all the love, all the compassion, the mercy we need, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We are praying, Lord, if there is anything in our personal lives that needs correction, that needs cure, that needs your touch, touch every brother of mine here. Touch every sister of mine here. I pray, O oh Lord, that they will be strong in the Lord in Jesus' name. I also pray that all the gifts they need to succeed in their appointed ministry. Grant unto everyone. Grant unto everyone. And the boldness that goes along with functioning appropriately. The fearlessness that goes along. And the conviction that goes along. And the courage that goes along. Functioning appropriately. Grieve everyone in Jesus name. Like all these men of God, Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, and Peter, and Paul, and the rest of them, like they succeeded in the ministry, we will succeed. We will succeed. We will not fail. We will not fall. We will not be defeated. We will not be victims. We will be victors and more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Let your hand of power and anointing remain upon every one of your ministers represented here in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare, we'll hear good stories about everyone. Testimonies about everyone. And your people in their location will know that this man, this woman, have been appointed of God in their place by the Almighty God to minister unto their needs. And they will minister effectively. And your power, your anointing will never fail in their lives. Confirm everything that we have said on your people, on your servants. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.